moment I thought I was gonna die. Hey guys, it's Keegan, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are baking. You guys always tell me that your favorite parts of my weekly vlogs are the little cooking segments, and mine too because it involves food. But you guys always ask me to do separate like cooking, baking videos, so I'm here delivering. Thank you, thank you, no. I also will be talking quite a bit in this video because I do enjoy talking as well. We are making some Valentine's Day treats and I know Valentine's Day is over. However, I love the aesthetic of Valentine's Day. So on this channel, Valentine's Day is not over until I say it's over. And I will say it's over once I'm done making these. We are making some cookies with M&Ms in them, but like cute little like Valentine's Day M&Ms. I'm really excited. First, we needed to go grocery shopping to get the ingredients I didn't have. Oops, almost forgot to turn the lights off. We are looking for cute pink M&Ms. They blocked off the Valentine's Day section, so I'm like, how am I supposed to get cute Valentine's Day M&Ms if there's no Valentine's Day section? They're restocking it with the Easter stuff, which would be cute. There probably would be Easter stuff, but it's also blocked off. So I might have to go to another store, but I'm about to pee myself. I found them and they're on sale. I'll do two. While we're here, I might as well. I actually like just went grocery shopping and then like changed into this top right after. I was like, it's more festive, it's pink. And then I didn't realize like my body and my face don't really match, but like it's fine. We'll move on from it, we'll get over it. So we're baking. <laughs> the first step would probably be to pull up the recipe on my phone, cause I forgot to do that. First step, we're gonna preheat the oven. Just did that. Okay, now what do I gotta do? Oh, okay. Should I get out all the ingredients? Probably. Wait, wait, what? I, what? Oh, I was like, why was I just in the fridge? <gasps> I have a pink bowl. I hope this is big enough. It's not as pink as I thought it was gonna be. Don't mind my backup camera. It's gonna be recording like a little aerial shot. You get all the angles. I really hope my feet aren't gonna be in the shot. Ooh, I'm not wearing socks. First things first, three fourths cup of brown sugar. Oh, brown sugar just got everywhere. Mm. While I bake this, I thought we would chat. And because these are Valentine's Day themed cookies, I thought I'd tell you some like dating stories. <laughs> okay, but before we do that, we're also gonna add, wait, that is not a lot of white sugar. A fourth cup of regular sugar. So I thought I would tell you guys the story of the worst first date I ever went on. Well, actually the worst date in general. This was by far the worst date I've ever been on in my entire life. I just also got sugar everywhere. I'm a mess today. Just trying my best. We're also gonna add one Oh my god, there's sugar all over the floor. How did I do this? We're also gonna add one egg and two teaspoons of vanilla. This first date that I went on was actually the very first date that I went on after I got out of my almost four year long relationship. It was a really great introduction into the dating world having the worst date I've ever been on be my first one back at it. So it was, you know, great for the self esteem. This was decently soon after I'd gotten out of that relationship. I think this was like two or three months after we had broken up. I knew at this point in time that I didn't wanna be in a relationship. I didn't wanna talk to anyone. But the idea of going on a first date dating people terrified me. It made me shake. I was so scared of it because I hadn't been on a first date in a really long time. It had been years since I had been on a first date. Also, side note, because we do have to bake as well as talk, butter needs to be softened, which I didn't think I had to do. So I'm going to pop it in the microwave. It's also salted butter, but I have unsalted butter. I kind of figured that I would never use salted butter. So I'll just like throw in some extra salt. Who calls for salted butter in a recipe? I just find that odd. Three-fourths a cup of softened butter. A little tip for you guys with butter when you soften it. I like to cut it in little measurements of tablespoon. I find that it helps it soften all the way through so the center is not still hard. This kind of just evens out the softness of the butter, which makes it easier to cream. Anyways, back to this first date. I knew that I didn't want to date anyone. I didn't want anything serious with anyone, but I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just put myself out there, go on a date, and the more I do it, the less scary it will be. I kind of viewed it almost as like exposure therapy. Very minor exposure therapy. I was like, the more I go on dates, the more experience we'll have, and the less scary it will be. I mean, that sounds like it makes sense, right? I put myself on a dating app. I don't remember which one it was. Why do I think it's Tinder? Actually, it totally was. Oh, the oven's overheating. It totally was Tinder and I haven't been on Tinder since. I am now strictly a hinge girly. I had met a few people, talked to a few people, but there was this one guy that I met and we started a Snapchat streak and we were Snapchatting for like a week or two or whatever. He seemed nice. This is what the butter looks like. We're gonna pop it in the microwave for like 30 seconds. I find that the more melted your butter gets, the thinner the cookie is and the less melted your butter is, the thicker the cookie is. I kind of like a little bit of meltiness because I find it makes it chewier, but I do love a thick cookie. Oh, got a little bit more melted than I expected it to. 
Oops, I got a hand mixer for Christmas. This will in fact be my first time using it. I should probably clean these first. What did you say? Probably. Probably the hygienic thing to do. Wait, what? There's so many of them. Oh, there's like a little whisk. That's so cute. Back to my story. This will be a story with many interruptions because we're also baking. We're multitasking. I've been talking to this guy for like a week or two and then he finally was like, do you want to go on a date? Like I know this really good sushi place. I'd love to take you there. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I'm terrified. I'm going to shit my pants. I've never used this before. I've never even used a hand mixer. So I don't really know what I'm doing. We'll figure it out. To oh, ow. Just close the drawer on my finger. Okay. Assuming this goes in here and this goes in here and this goes into the outlet. Will you guys be able to hear me talk over the sound of I'll try to make this fast, okay? I don't oh, one of them totally just fell out. Why won't it go in though? Better. Fast forward to the day of the date, he was like, hey, can I pick you up and I'll drive you to the sushi place? And I was like, oh no, I think I'd rather just meet you there. And he was like, no, seriously, I don't mind picking you up. And I was like, N I would I would rather, I'd rather just meet you there. I'd rather just drive. He was so persistent on the fact that he wanted to pick me up. And I understand that it's like wanting to be a gentleman, but I also think that men don't realize that we are scared for our lives. I saw this thing and it's like a man's biggest fear going on a first date is that the girl doesn't look like her photos. A woman's biggest fear on a first date is being unalived or essayed. I don't want to be either of those. So I was a little scared. And he was like, where do you live? And I was like, you can tell this man where I live. And so I gave him like the crossroads of where I live. And he was like, no way. I live on those crossroads too. So we realized that we lived three minutes away from each other. He literally lived down the street from me. I could see his apartment from my apartment. So I was like, okay, I'll let him pick me up because he was so persistent. Let's add some more things in here while we talk though. Okay, in another bowl, we're going to add flour, cornstarch. I've never added cornstarch into cookies, baking soda and salt. So the time comes and he comes and picks me up. I have to say this and I don't want to be mean and say this, but instantly when I got in his car, I knew that I wasn't attracted to him. And truthfully, it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't think that attraction is everything, but I think attraction is the bare minimum, okay? I'm gonna go on this little like side tangent because it's me, I can't tell a story without going on a side tangent. I feel like a lot of the times, us women have to convince ourselves that we are attracted to these men when we are in fact not. And honestly, you don't see men doing that. You don't see men convincing themselves to be attracted to these women. If they're not attracted to them, they don't go on a second date with them. I don't think that attraction is everything. I don't think that appearance is everything, but I do think that you should be attracted attracted to someone that you're dating, you're going out with. They don't have to be a 10, but they shouldn't be a two in your eyes. I hope I have enough flour. So I was really nervous when I got in his car. And so the first thing that I said, I was like, I'm going to make a joke and break the ice. And I was like, thanks for picking me up. What a long commute over here. Because he lived like two, three minutes away from me. It was a joke. Like I clearly was joking. Like it's not a long commute. It was a joke, right? Mm. And he was like, oh, do you want to see where I live? And I was like, oh, no, we don't, have, we don't have to do that. Like, no, we don't have to do that. And he was like, no, no, no. Like, it's okay. Like my apartment is on the way to the sushi restaurant we'll just like drive past it and i'll just like point it out when we drive past it and i was like oh okay like we're just driving past it no big deal he starts driving away from my apartment and we pass his apartment very quickly and he's like oh this is my apartment and then he turns into the apartment he turns into the parking lot of the apartment and i was like what are what are we doing and he's like oh i'm just like driving you around like i'll just show you what like the outside looks like then we'll go to the sushi restaurant and i was like oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm like nervous at this point because I'm like, oh my God, like I haven't been on a date in a really long time. Like, is this how I get murdered? I don't know what's happening. So then we get to his apartment and he parks his car and I'm like, why is he parking his car? And then he starts to get out of his car and he's like, here, I'll show you around. And I literally said this. I verbatim said this. I was like, I don't think I want to do this. I literally said, I don't think I want to do this. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, I'll just show you my apartment. Then we'll go get sushi. Like, I'm, I'll just like show you what it looks like on the inside. And I was like, we really, we really don't have to do this. I don't like, this is kind of weird. I don't know if I want to do this. I said that. I said that out loud. And he was like, no, it's not weird. Like, let me just show you my apartment. In this moment, I thought I was going to die. I am too young to die. I was freaking out. He's being super persistent at this point too. This man is not letting it go. Like he's wanting me to see his apartment. And I'm like, when I walk into this apartment, what am I going to see? Is he going to unalive me? Like I was terrified and I feel like I couldn't get out of it because I didn't have an out because I wasn't driving and I was so stressed. I immediately got out my phone and I texted my best friend and I was like, he's bringing me into his apartment. If I don't respond to your text in five minutes, call the police. You have my location. I was like, I'm so scared right now. I don't know what to do. So we walk into his apartment. Do you want to know the first thing that we see? His naked roommate. His roommate was naked. I saw his naked roommate the second I walked in the door. Yep. I saw a naked man. His roommate had just showered and he was walking from the bathroom to his 
his room. I don't know why he decided not to wear a towel. I guess they don't do that. I guess they're just that kind of close. I guess he thought he was alone. So I saw his naked room. I instantly like turned around. If I walked in the door, I was like, mm. my face was facing away from the naked roommate. Cause I was like, I don't need to be seeing this naked man right now. So that was really fun. Should we give this guy a name? I'm trying to think of a name. John, I feel like John is a, you know, a basic name. John is like, let me give you a tour of my apartment. And I was like, oh, it looks nice. I'm standing by the door frame. This is me. This is me the whole time. No, no, that, not, it looks nice. Looks great from here. I was not leaving that door frame. He was like, oh, let me like show you my bedroom. And I was like, Mm, looks nice. And he's like, you can't really see it from there. And I'm like, oh, but I can see it plenty fine. I was already mad at myself enough for like walking into the apartment. I just didn't want to die. I don't know if he got the vibe that I was uncomfortable or not. We did leave, thankfully, because I did not leave the door frame. This is to add a fourth assault. I'm going to add two fourths assault, maybe, because I didn't do the salted butter. I don't know if this is going to make it too salty. I'm going to give it a little mix. So we get in his car and we're driving to the sushi restaurant. I would also like to note that his apartment was in the complete opposite direction of the sushi restaurant. So he lied to me about that. So we're in the car and we're not even like 10 minutes into this date, keep this in mind. Within the first five minutes of the date, I was in his apartment. And then the five minutes after that, driving to the sushi restaurant, we hadn't even gone out of the car yet. He starts trauma dumping on me. Capital T trauma dumping. Let me just say, I do enjoy a good trauma dump. I am a trauma dumper. However, the type of trauma that he was telling me, I don't know if I feel comfortable saying it on the internet but it's the kind of trauma that you could go to therapy for the rest of your life and it probably still will not resolve those issues we hadn't even gotten to the sushi restaurant yet and he was capital capital t all caps all caps trauma trauma dumping on me in the passenger seat of his car and i was like mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, wow. No, what, wow, mm, oh my God, oh wow. Mm. I didn't know what to say. This is not how I thought this first date was gonna go. We are going to start mixing in the dry ingredients with the wet ingredients, and I'm gonna do it about a half a cup at a time. I can't really tell this story as I'm like with that, so we will see how this goes. <laughs> We're gonna scrape down the edges and I'm gonna keep telling you the story. We get to the sushi restaurant and the sushi restaurant that he took me to was at a really expensive hotel. It's called the W Scottsdale. That's where Alex Earl stayed when she was here in Scottsdale for the Super Bowl. Like that's how expensive of a restaurant that is. That will come into play later, okay? really good. I just kind of want to eat this right now. I don't even want to make the cookie. So we sit down and we're ordering and he's like, I'll get us a couple sushi rolls. Like, what do you want to get? And I was like, I really like any sushi. The only thing that I am not a big fan of is like tuna. I'm not a big tuna person. And he's like, okay, got that in mind. He's like, I'll order for us, right? He orders for us. He orders four rolls. Three of the four are tuna rolls. The one thing that I said I didn't want to eat. <laughs> so then we're sitting down and he starts trauma dumping on me some more, but about different things this time. He is telling me about how he like lost his job and how he's been applying for jobs and how he gets these interviews. It doesn't go anywhere and he doesn't even know how he's going to pay rent. And part of me is like, why did he invite me to this really expensive sushi restaurant if he can't even afford his own rent? And let me just say, I'm not someone who cares if like a man doesn't have money. I mean this in the most humble way possible, but I've never dated a man has more money than me, which I mean, granted, all my relationships have been in high school or in college, and I pretty much have had a full-time job since I was like 15. So I mean, it, it didn't bother me, but I was like, on a first date, like you kind of want to sell yourself. You don't really want to maybe say all these really negative characteristics about you. He starts trauma dumping on me about some more things. I would also like to note that he did not ask me a single question this entire time. We talked about him the entire time. I asked him questions that like he could have easily been like, what about you? He never once asked me about my job. Still to this day, I don't think he knows that I make YouTube videos because he never once asked me about my job. So that was super fun. I was like halfway through the meal and I was like, we have not talked about me once. He knows nothing about me other than the fact that I can listen to his trauma. <laughs> he starts telling me about how he like broke his knee and then he had like moved in with his parents and he was like super depressed and how like all this bad stuff was happening in his life and blah, 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 blah. It was like, it was kind of heavy. It was a lot. And then he told me, uh, you guys are gonna die when I tell you this. And like, his tinder bio it said something about how he was on a really famous talk show tv and so i asked him about that i was like what like tv show were you on because you know me i can make conversation with a wall and clearly he can't ask me a question back and so i'm not going to say which tv show this was because i don't want you guys to be able to like find who this man was but he was telling me that he was on this really popular tv show and his mom had submitted him and the premise of why he was on this tv show was him being a deadbeat early 20s who lives on his parents couch plays video games all day and has no aspirations to get a job yeah so he was on tv for that 
And I was like, wow, that's great that your mom thinks that about you. That's fantastic. Mm. Like who puts that in their Tinder bio? Like, of course it's cool that you're on a TV show, but if like the premise of the TV show is that like you're doing nothing with your life, like living on your parents' couch, and there's nothing wrong with living with your parents or doing anything like that, I'm not judging. I just think on a first date, it's kind of like a job interview where you want to put your best foot forward. You want to impress the person. You kind of want to show them all of your good qualities and not necessarily your bad qualities yet. I don't think he understood that. And then he starts showing me all of his travel photos and all this stuff. And like, I've traveled a good amount. I had recently been to Europe and so, he never asked me about it. I had made a comment. I was like, oh, I like recently like traveled to Europe too. He didn't care. He was like, oh yeah. So when I went and I was like, okay. So I'm like counting down the seconds until this date is over, right? We get our food. We eat our food. I barely ate anything because I didn't like what he ordered because I told him I didn't like tuna and he ordered tuna. I can't stop eating the cookie dough. So he tells me, he's like, this place has like a rooftop. Do you want to go walk around and see it? In my head, I was like, no, I don't. But I was like, you know what? Like we just finished dinner. We'll walk around the rooftop. He'll drop me off at home and then I'll never have to see this man ever again. And he's like, oh yeah, I know what the rooftop is because I applied for a job here, but they didn't give it to me. Why is he telling me this stuff? Now we're going to add chocolate chips and M&Ms and I have really cute pink festive M&Ms. Half a cup of chocolate chips, two cups of M&Ms. We go to this rooftop and up there is a bar and he's like, let's get a drink. And I was like, I don't want to get a drink. I just want to go home. But he talked me into getting a drink. We go up to this bar and we order our drinks and I offered to pay for it because he paid for dinner. He actually told me he paid for dinner with his rent money. Why did he bring me on this date? I have no idea. So I offered to pay. Okay, this looks like a lot, so I'm gonna start with one cup of M&Ms and then we'll add another for two. And he took me up with my offer and let me pay, which again, no big deal. However, when I was paying, he kept staring at me signing the check and he was like, oh, like I just wanted to see how much you tip. And like, I always tip 20%. And he's like, I never tip 20%. Side eye, side eye. And he was like, I was a bartender. Like, I don't think that bartenders need to be tipped 20%. Like people never tipped me 20%. And I'm like, maybe you just weren't a good bartender. There's a thought. So we get these drinks and then we go sit down by this pool because this is a hotel. So there's like a little rooftop pool. So we get our drinks and we go sit down by the pool and he starts talking some more about trauma. He has so much trauma. He should have paid me to be his therapist. He was telling me about how he found a dead body one time and like all of this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, like I have to get out of here. I kept going to the bathroom. I think I went to the bathroom like five times while we were on this rooftop just to get away from him. And part of me was like, oh my God, should I call an Uber and just like get out of here? But then I realized when I went to the bathroom, I left my purse next to him when we we're sitting by the pool. And part of me was like, do I leave my purse? Like, is it worth it? Like I could just cancel all my credit cards. Then I was like, no, my house keys are in there. So I was like, okay, I just suck it up. This looks so beautiful. I'm like really obsessed with this. Guys, this is stunning and delicious. <laughs> Two cups of M&Ms would have been way too much. I have to eat a bite with the M&Ms in it. I have to. Mm. Now we're gonna roll these into little balls. Don't judge me, my baking pans are disgusting. I need to get new ones. If you guys have any recommendations, let me know because food sticks to them and I could never get them off. So they're kind of gross. I come back from the bathroom for like the third time. My drink was gone. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get out of here. I can't wait for this. I finished my drink, I'm gonna go home. He had ordered us another round on my card without asking me first. Again, not a big deal, but I wanted to go home. So we're sitting there talking. He actually asked me his first question for me of the night. Guess what it was? Just guess. He asked me how many boyfriends I've had. <laughs> I told him that I've had five boyfriends and I mean, I had four boyfriends in high school and one boyfriend in college, right? And he basically like slut shamed me <laughs> for having five boyfriends. And then he goes on and on and talks about how he was like the best bartender of the world, how every single person was like obsessed with him at his old bar that he worked at back at home and I was like I don't know if you didn't get tip 20% maybe you weren't that great of a bartender obviously I didn't say that to him we finished our second drink and I'm like yes I can go home I was counting down the seconds until we were done with our drinks I slurped mine down though too I drank that so fast because I was like I gotta get out of here and again he was my ride I could like I couldn't get out of there from this point on forward I will be driving myself to every first date I don't want a man to ever drive me on a first date because if I need an out I want to be able to just out I should have called an uber you live in your learn. So we're done with our drinks and I was like, yes, we're leaving. And then this bartender comes over or this server and he's like, hey guys, do you guys want another round? And I was like, oh no, like I'm good with mine. And he's like, I'll take another round. So he gets a third drink on my tab. That was really fun. Also keep in mind, he was driving and he was three drinks and I was kind of buzzed because I had slurped mine down. 
remember because I was trying to get out of there. I was trying to drink my drink as fast as humanly possible. So he just wasn't really my vibe. And then he keeps talking about how he doesn't like TV. He doesn't like movies. Like the only thing he really like uses his TV for is video games. This will come into play later, okay? He finally finished his third drink and I was like, you know, like I'm kind of getting a little tired. Like maybe we should go. Like I have work in the morning. Again, he has no idea what I do for work because he never asked. That would have been a great point in time for him to be like, oh, what do you do? No, didn't do that. He did not do that. These are so beautiful. I'm obsessed, you guys. We need another bite. Uh -huh. So on our way out, I had finally convinced this man to take me home because I was having a horrible time. And I told him I was tired because it was a Thursday night. I was like, I work in the morning. If you ever see blogs and they have like really pretty cookies and you're like, my cookies never look like that. It's because they take chocolate chips, M&Ms, whatever, and press them into the cookies before they bake them. So I'm going to do that. So as we're walking to his car, he's definitely like buzzed, which I was really scared to drive home with him. I was like, I don't think this is safe. He kept like trying to talk to me and like brag about how he was invited to be a promoter at this club. And he was clearly saying it to impress me. And let me just say that kind of I dropped an M&M. That kind of stuff does not impress me. I was not impressed. He literally could have told me that he cured cancer and I would not have been impressed at that point in the night because he was annoying me that much. And so he just kept talking to me about how like all these people like wanted him to be this promoter and how he has all these friends and all this stuff and how he's new to town, but like everybody like saw something in him to be a promoter. And I was like, cool. Yeah, that's like so awesome. Like that's awesome. I did not care. But he's driving me home and then he makes a comment to me and he's like, are you sure you don't want to go back to my place? Because watch a movie. Mr. I hate movies. I can't stand movies. I don't ever watch TV. I hate movies. I never want to watch anything on the screen. I'm boring. I can't keep an attention span. What do you think he wanted to do? Do you think he really wanted to watch a movie? I don't think so. This was the most intolerable man that I've ever met in my entire life and I was like blown away by his audacity to think that I would go back to his apartment with him and watch a movie and this man thinks that I had a great time and want to go home with him. Really? Really? The audacity. I did not go home with him. I was like, you know, I'm just like so tired. Like, thank you so much for offering. But like, I just, I'm really tired. <sighs> Fake yawning. It was pretty late at this point. I think it was like 10 PM. Like we were there for a while and I was just counting down the seconds until I left. And then he gets to my apartment. I'm like, okay, bye. And he's like, wait, 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 let me give you a hug goodbye. So he like reaches over like the middle console. Like we're still sitting in the front seat of his car and he reaches over and hugs me. And I have never pulled away from a hug so fast in my life. So freaking fast in my life because I was not about to let this man kiss me. He ruined my Thursday night. I wasn't gonna let him kiss me. Not a chance in hell that was happening. So imagine this is the hug, right? Like that was me. Like it was so unsmooth, unsly, but I was like, I am getting away from this man. I was like, thanks. Still to this day, he does not know that I make YouTube videos. So I guarantee you, he's never gonna see this. So that was a really great first date back in the dating world after I had just gotten out of a relationship. It really boosted my confidence that there are good men out there. It really did. We're gonna put this in the oven. I don't know how long for, nine to 11 minutes. I like to go on the shorter end of the baking time and then let it carry over cook, which is when you take it out of the oven and then you let it sit on the hot pan for a while. It gets the outside hard but the inside gooey. Mwah, love. Oh, well, that is in the oven. I'm going to clean all this up. Maybe eat a little bit of cookie dough. I have some leftovers. I will say though, as much as it was a horrible date and it... <laughs> taught me some lessons but i will say that it did give me a lot of confidence that i could go into a date and i could hold a conversation with someone i could keep it going i could have a horrible time but they will still have a great time i mean he had a great time we talked about him the entire time he got a free therapy session out of this i think i ended up spending more money than he did buying all the drinks than he did like paying for the sushi because we didn't get any drinks with dinner so it did ease some anxiety and i also felt like the worst had already happened like i'm sure like worse could happen but i haven't had a bad date since or at least that bad of the day like that really set the bar low so everything after that has been amazing it was an interesting experience but it did give me a lot of confidence in my talking skills while these bake i will be cleaning i will see you guys when these are cooled and ready for the taste test this is how I like my cookies out of the oven. They're a little underdone almost, but I like for them to carry over cook. So they're going to harden a little bit. So they'll be like extra gooey in the center, which is yummy. Ooh, oh my gosh. Angel numbers. This is what the cookies look like after they've all carry over cooked the pan. I mean, it's a little warm, but it's not hot. I'm like not burning myself. If you like your cookies to be a little more golden brown, cook them for longer. I like my cookies to be like almost raw. <laughs> now it is time for my favorite part of the video. When I get to eat them, duh. I'm gonna choose the ugliest cookie to eat because I want to take a photo of them. This one was selected as the ugliest cookie. 
Mm. That's really good. I will say, I do like kind of an underbaked cookie, but I wish I would have cooked these for a little longer. Normally I'd eat that whole thing, but I ate a lot of cookie dough. So I'm feeling pretty full. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching this video. I didn't expect that one story to be the entire video, but let me know if you want more stories. They don't even have to be dating stories. They can just be stories in general. I don't know, but I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Mwah! Mwah. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy late Valentine's Day.